Hi guys, in our last video we looked at how to construct Born Harbour cycles, so now we're going to look at how to do calculations with them. The easiest way to learn this is by seeing examples followed through. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to find the lattice enthalpy of sodium chloride, and this is the data we have to do it. We've got the enthalpy change of formation of sodium chloride, then we've got the enthalpy change of atomization for sodium and chlorine, then we have the first ionization energy, and finally we have the first electron affinity. The best place to start born harbor cycles is with the enthalpy of formation step. So we have this baseline here, which will have our ionic solid on it, which in this case is sodium chloride. In formation, we form this from the elements in their standard state, so that's solid sodium and chlorine gas, which is diatomic. Using the data we were given at the beginning, we know that this is a change in the energy level of minus 411 kilojoules per mole. Now ultimately we're working to get to the gaseous ions, so we can start by getting to the gaseous atoms through the atomization process. Remember to show this on your start cycle one step at a time. So firstly we'll go from solid sodium into gaseous sodium, leaving the chlorine gas alone, and then secondly we atomise the chlorine, so it's no longer diatomic and it's split into one mole of monatomic chlorine. We have to put in energy to do this, and respectively, it's 107 kilojoules per mole and 121 kilojoules per mole for the chlorine. Now we want to give the atoms the right charge, so we're going to ionise the sodium first of all. Remember this involves taking an electron away from sodium, so we're left with a positive sodium ion which is, again, gaseous. We've still just got the chlorine as we had on the previous rung, but now we've also got to include an electron which we've pulled away. The energy taken to do this is 496 kilojoules per mole. All that's left to do now with the information we have is give the electron that we've taken from sodium to chlorine, which is the electron affinity. So we're going to be left with the gaseous ions we wanted, which is sodium 1 plus gas and chloride ions, which are also gaseous. Because of the attraction between the electron and the nucleus of the chlorine, this gives out energy and we have a negative enthalpy change of 346 kilojoules per mole. We've now completed our cycle and we can label the final step that we're interested in, which is the lattice enthalpy, which has a symbol of delta Le H standard. And it's this point we can use Hess's law to find this value. We know that energy changes between this point and this point are going to be the same, so if we want to know the energy involved going this way, then we need to add up all of the energy steps here, 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 and here, and this provides us with an alternative route to get between those points. So if we write out each of the terms, what we're saying is that the change in enthalpy for the lattice energy is equal to going against this red arrow, so we've got either minus and minus, or you can just think of it as going up in the energy level diagram, so that's an increase in the energy of the system of 346 kilojoules per mole. We then go against this arrow, and now we're going down in the energy of the system, so we've got minus 496 kilojoules per mole for undoing the ionisation energy of the sodium, now if we go from here down to here, going against the arrow for the atomization of chlorine, again we're dropping in energy of 121 kilojoules per mole, so that's minus 121 kilojoules per mole, and then again we're dropping in energy to go down against the atomization of the sodium, so we take away another 107 kilojoules per mole in the energy level. 
Finally, we're going with this last arrow, which is once again down in energy. So we have minus 411 kilojoules per mole. And then if we put all of this into our calculator, this would give us a final answer for the lattice energy of sodium chloride of minus 789 kilojoules per mole. As a quick sanity check, just to make sure you got it all right, you can see that this number is much bigger, or much greater in magnitude, I should say, than all of the other numbers, which then makes sense because this arrow is also much bigger. Now we've seen how Born Harbor cycles can be used to find the lattice energy, let's consider how we could find some other quantities. For example, here we'll be looking at the second electron affinity of oxygen. Again, the best way to see how these sort of calculations can be done is to work through an example. So we're given our data to start with. The lattice we're going to be working with is magnesium oxide, and the green gives us the formation enthalpy of the lattice. And by that I don't mean the lattice energy, to avoid confusion, I mean the formation of the product from its constituent elements. Then in brown we have the atomization of the magnesium and the oxygen. And then in our lattice, the magnesium is a 2 plus ion, so we have the first and the second ionization energy for the magnesium. We have to take away two electrons to give it the right charge, so we have two energy changes. We are then only given the first electron affinity of oxygen, because we're going to be finding the second electron affinity in the question. And then finally, this time, we're given the lattice enthalpy of the lattice, magnesium oxide. So now, let's think about how to do this. As you always should with Born Harbor cycles, we're going to start with the enthalpy of formation step. So we can write in our lattice magnesium oxide and the elements that's made out of, which is solid magnesium in the form of a metal and then half a mole of O2 gas, which is diatomic. The energy change in this case is a decrease in the energy of the system, so minus 602 kilojoules per mole. So the next step, as you should be getting used to now in a Born Harbor cycle, is atomization. So one by one on the rungs, we turn each ele element into a monatomic gaseous atom. So there's the magnesium and we leave oxygen as it was on the rung below. And then in the next step, we form the oxygen into the monatomic mole that we want. Now we're going up in energy. The first step is 148 kilojoules per mole. And the second step is plus 249 kilojoules per mole. Now we want to make the atoms charged into ions, so we're going to start with the ionisation of magnesium. Because it's a 2 plus ion, we're going to do this in two steps. So initially we form the 1 plus ion, which is still gaseous, and we do this by taking away one electron, which you should remember to show in the born harbour cycle, and then in the next step we take another electron away from the 1 plus ion, to form a 2 plus gaseous ion. And now we have two electrons on this rung, which we're going to give to oxygen. We're going to give these electrons to oxygen one at a time. So initially we have the first electron affinity, which is exothermic, so we have a drop in our diagram. And we're left with the magnesium 2 plus ions. We're left with an oxygen 1 minus ion and we've still got an electron to use. We should have labelled the energy changes before for the ionisation of magnesium, but we can do that now. So we're increasing by 738 here. Remember all this data is given at the beginning of the question, and we're increasing by 1,451 kilojoules per mole to go to the magnesium 2 plus ion, and then we're decreasing by 147 kilojoules per mole when we give oxygen the electron. Now the next stage would be to combine this electron with the oxygen to get a 2 minus ion. 
And this is the stage that we don't know, the second electron affinity that we're trying to find. It will take us to our final stage in the Born Harbour cycle. So we've got our Mg2 plus gaseous ions and we've got our O2 minus gaseous ions. But we don't know yet what the energy change is, which is given the symbol Ea2H standard. We've now drawn on our final energy change, which is the lattice energy, the last one given in the equation, which is a drop of minus 3830 kilojoules per mole. Now we can use Hess's law to find the missing value. We're looking to go from this level here to this level here, and we don't know this path. So instead, we're going to sum up each of these energy changes here to form a second path, which by Hess's law will have the same energy change. So if we write out each of those changes one by one, what we're looking for is the change for the electron affinity, the second electron affinity of oxygen. We're increasing in energy here by 147 kilojoules per mole, so that's plus 147. Then as we follow the path around here, we're going against the original orange arrows, so these become minus signs because we're decreasing in energy, first by 1,451 kilojoules per mole, then by 738 kilojoules per mole, and now we can reverse the atomization steps. So again, we're decreasing in energy both of these times, first by 249, then by 148, and then our final step to get up to the level we want to get up to is to increase the energy by going against the lattice enthalpy. So now we're going to add on 3830. So this gives us a final answer of plus 1391 kilojoules per mole for the second electron affinity of oxygen. So, to summarise what we've learned in this video, we now know how to construct Born Harbour cycles and calculate a lattice enthalpy and carry out other calculations to find not only the lattice enthalpy but other things from the Born Harbour cycles. Thanks very much for watching guys and there'll be a next video with an exam question. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.